Hello, this is the second video of a series of four videos that are all about the making of a large format contact print from an 8x10 negative. In the previous video we have seen how to expose the 8x10 black and white negative film, while in this second video we are going to see how to develop this sheet of film in the wet dark room. We'll first go into plenty of details about the choices that a photographer can make when developing the negative to make sure that uh, all the information is easy to print into the black and white paper. And after this consideration we will go into the wet dark room to see how the process is carried out. In the previous video of this series, linked above, we exposed an 8x10 black and white negative film, taking the picture of a bridge that is close to my home in Pittsburgh. Some of the footage is playing now. After exposing the film, it is now time to develop it, which requires some considerations regarding sharpness, contrast and development time. Developing a film is an irreversible procedure. Any error means that it is necessary to start from scratch, so particular care must be taken. So let's recap where we're at. After the exposure, there is now a latent image on the film of sensitized silver halide crystals recorded into the photographic emulsion. With the development procedure, a permanent image of silver metal is formed, and during the development procedure it is possible to alter some properties of the final image, including sharpness, grain size, and especially contrast. These parameters are adjusted based on the type of image one wishes to create. First, let's talk about sharpness and grain in contact prints. There are really no concerns about sharpness given the enormous size of the 8x10 negative and the fact that the plan is to make a contact print of it without any enlargement. So there was no point in fussing around with specialty fine grain developers and a normal developer was used, Kodak HC110, which is a stable, reliable and inexpensive developer used by many generations of photographers. The main concern when developing this image was to control the contrast of the negative via the appropriate development time and temperature. A prolonged development time will increase contrast. A normal or standard development time will preserve a standard degree of tonal separation, while a shorter development time will decrease contrast. The development time will also alter the density of the image, but the density is always sufficient if the negative is exposed correctly. Instead, the adjustment of contrast is a much more important factor from a creative or expressive point of view. A negative with too much contrast will be harsh and very difficult if not impossible to print, while a negative with too little contrast will give a lifeless, flat image. A rational choice on the development time can be made based on the contrast level present at the time and place of the exposure and based on the image on the mood that the photographer wishes to create. For this, let's analyze the context of this photograph. The photo of this bridge is part of a small project of photographs of bridges that were all taken here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. All of the pictures have been taken from under the arc of the bridges with a wide angle lens on 8x10 film. In the compositions, most bridges emerge from nature or from a blank sky looking like odd, large megastructures. A choice was made to simplify and organize the composition by creating images that are very symmetrical. Another choice was to further simplify the photos by subtracting information, which was achieved by printing the sky as pure white in each image. So also this new negative should be printed in a similar way, with a white sky, to match with a series of photographs. So for this image, we want to maintain good tonal separation in the bridge itself and in the surrounding plants and nature, but the sky should be rendered as pure white. Essentially, it does not matter if the sky is completely blown out. This is good news, because it means that we don't have to compress the contrast of the negative to be able to include information both on the dark foliage and on the bright sky which would result in an overall flat, lifeless negative without mid-tone contrast. It's all about mid-tone contrast. Therefore, the choice is to develop the negative with a normal degree of contrast and let the sky go to extreme tonal values. In this way, 
All the important midtone information will be preserved in the branches, the trees and the bridge itself. The bridge was made of concrete, light in color, and was catching a lot of reflected light from the street, giving a good degree of separation between the bridge itself and the foliage. The same approach can be achieved in a more rigorous way by using the quantitative zone system developed by Ansel Adams, placing the shadows in zone 3 and the highlights in zone 8. If you are interested in this topic, please consider subscribing as I plan more videos about this in the future. At this point, we can go into the darkroom and get ready to develop the negative under normal contrast conditions. The normal development time for the combination of developer, which is Kodak HC110 and film, Ilford HP5 Plus, can be retrieved by consulting online databases such as MassiveDevChart.com. The database gave a development time of 7.5 minutes at 20 degrees centigrade or 68 Fahrenheit for a dilution of developer of one part of developer in 47 parts of water. The developer is mixed to appropriate dilution and poured onto a tray. Then the temperature is measured for consistency. Tables can be consulted to adjust development time based on temperature. A second tray with plain water is placed before the development tray. This first pre-soak bath makes sure that the subsequent developer bath has an even action on the negative from the beginning. In the third tray, after the developer, there is an acid stop bath containing dilute acetic acid. This will immediately stop the action of the developer, so that the desired contrast level is reached. In the fourth tray, there is a fixer bath to dissolve the unreacted silver salts and create a permanent metallic silver image. The development must be conducted in complete darkness, but for the sake of this video I am using already developed sheets of film under normal lighting. In the dark, the film is extracted from the film holder and placed in the pre-soak bath. A few seconds are let to pass before a second sheet is placed on top, to make sure that the two pieces of film do not stick together. After some gentle agitation, the stack of negatives is let to drip for a few seconds and transfer to the developing bath with the emulsion side on top. The timer is started for 7.5 minutes. The negatives are shuffled continuously for the first 30 seconds to start an even action of the chemical reducing agents, making sure that the edges of the negatives do not scratch the soft, swollen emulsion. Afterwards, the negatives are reshuffled once every 30 seconds. In this time, the latent image of sensitized silver halides is converted into silver metal grains. Gloves are used to avoid staining the negative and the fingers, and to not transfer heat to the film, which would result in uneven development. After the prescribed time of 7.5 minutes, the negatives are let to drip for a couple of seconds and then transferred to the stop bath, which acts quickly to halt the developing process. The images is then fixed in a thiosulfate fixer bath, where unreacted silver salts are dissolved and a pure silver metal negative image is left in the emulsion. The negatives are then rinsed for about 10 minutes under running water. The key for a well-developed negative is consistency. For this reason, I prefer to develop only a small number of negatives, 2 to 4 at one time. I avoid developing one single negative because no shuffling motion is possible. After 10 minutes under running water, the negatives are given a final rinse with some surfactant, which helps the water to run off the surfaces, and hang to dry. The dry negative can be inspected on a light table, always an emotional and nice moment. The composition is overall as envisioned, with the symmetric and ordered structure of the bridge towering over the chaotic nature. Regarding negative density and contrast, the overall feeling is good separation between light and dark tones, with sufficient density. The three branches are the deepest shadows, the less dense part of the negative, but still contain good detail with clear three-dimensionality between the different parts of the branches. The foliage is also overall low density, but clearly shows the shape of the different leaves, indicating sufficient local contrast. The bridge is a lighter object with higher density in the negative. There is a good deal of separation between the bridge itself and the foliage. The sky is very very dense, 
it will definitely print white as envisioned. This is all for this video. Thank you for following along. In the next installment, we will make a contact print of this negative onto variable contrast black and white paper. I am looking forward to that.